Ladies and gentlemen, very welcome to our gala dinner of the ETFA 2016 in this location. Hopefully you also like this location. Um, it is called uh, Tipi am Kanzleramt. I think I have to explain it, especially for all non-Germans. Okay, Tipi means a tent, circus tent, as you see. Some disadvantages if it comes to high temperatures. And am Kanzleramt means close to the office of the Chancellor. Maybe if you come here, you also saw the building of the office of the Chancellor, very close to here, where our Chancellor Angela Merkel lives. We tried to invite her to come to us, <laughs> but she, she told uh, me, unfortunately, she has to do so much tonight. But we, she promised to come to us if we have the next conference in Lembo. <laughs> so, um, after a lot of technical discussions um, during the day, I think now it's time for socializing and also for discussing, for awarding and so on. And uh, I will give you a short overview about the today formal points of our agenda. We now start directly with the ABB Lifetime Award procedure. Afterwards, we have enough time for dinner. And after the dinner, but before the dessert, we will have the awarding procedure and also the announcement of the host of the next year ETFA. So, for the ABB Lifetime Award, I want to introduce my general co-chair, or the general co-chair, Richard Zorowski. He will now um, yeah, moderate this part of our agenda. Richard, I want to take over the mic to you. Thanks very much, Mr. Chairman. I am delighted to hear that somebody finally can properly pronounce my surname. Yes, Tsurawski. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, every year since 2008 at the ETFA conference, we acknowledge and actually to celebrate an extraordinary individual for his or her contribution to the factory and industrial automation areas. The award to be presented in a moment is called ABB Lifetime Contribution to Factory Automation Award. The, this award was founded in 2008 by ABB Corporate Research, supported by offices in Sweden, Germany, Switzerland, and recently in India. And of course, the Industrial Electronic Society of the IEEE. The award comes with the citation, permit me to read it, in grateful recognition of the lifetime contribution to the factory automation and industrial sorry, factory and industrial automation field for meritorious technical contribution and technical leadership. It is my great pleasure to invite to the podium Professor Alf Isaacson, the worldwide director for ABB control area, who is going to present the award. Please welcome Professor Isaacson. Thank you very much, uh, Richard. So, uh, I have to say that um, the committee, where I was not involved, so I can uh, be a bit neutral here, made an excellent choice this year in selecting uh, Professor Vladimir Machik from the Czech Technical University. So, please come up on stage 
Professor Marchi. So before presenting uh, the award, uh, I would like to um, read a little bit from, uh, from the CV of Professor Marchik. It's so long that I don't think I will be able to cover everything Then we will have dinner several hours from now. Uh, but uh, Professor Marchik is uh, currently the director of the Czech Institute of Informatics, Robotics and Cybernetics which is located at the Czech Technical University, which is, of course, in Prague in the Czech Republic. Um, after studying at the Czech Technical University and getting his degrees in the mid and late uh, 70s, he eventually became full professor at the Czech Technical University in 1990. Uh, he, is, he was head of the Department of Cybernetics, and, and was uh, running an EU center of re research excellence between 1999 and 2013. Uh, he, was, he has also had some strong connections to industry, and one of them was as a founder and director of the Rockwell Automation Research Center in Prague uh, between 1992 and 2009. And then, of course, the institute that he's currently the director of he was uh, a founder of that, as well as, uh, as um, uh, the uh, Cybernetics Institute. And, and this uh, Institute for Information, Informatics, uh, Robotics uh, has 110 members of staff and uh, now has a new building uh, worth 40 million euro that will be completed this year. Another great achievement, I'm sure. Uh, uh, Professor Marcik has uh, 30 years of experience in, in leading research uh, in industrial automation uh, with focus on applied artificial intelligence. And he has been strongly involved in the development on many industrial solutions, expert systems, multi-agent systems, agent-based control solutions, production planning and scheduling. He's author and co-author of more than 180 uh, journal and conference papers and has uh, authored or edited uh, 17 books and holds uh, five uh, US patents. And he's the editor-in-chief of IEEE SMC Transactions Part C. I think I uh, soon have to stop here. Uh, he is the chairman of the Research Council of the Technology Agency of the Czech Republic. So we are very happy to uh, present you with this um, ABB Lifetime Award. So um, with the award comes an obligation to give a brief presentation. So we will now listen to uh, Professor Marcik, please. Thank you very much, Alf. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, let me thank to Alf and Ricard for, and to all of you for this really very high award. I really appreciate, I don't know whether I really deserve such an award, it's highlighted in my professional career. So thank you very much. Uh, uh, 
I was asked to give short presentation, so I'll try to summarize, to summarize my activities and to link them with the development in the area of factory automation. So I try to split the, let's say, 45 years I am engaged in research in the field of factory automation into five periods, each of them lasting for around 10 years. So first was 70s, PID controller, analog controller, single loop control, and as a student, I participated in the development of some specific control tasks. In 80s, PLC entered the scene, and as a matter of fact, it was digital system, and we were able to decompose complex systems, and the communication was synchronous, fully consistent with Mezarovich and George Clear's uh, theory of systems, general system theory. In the 90s, CIM entered the scene. And as a matter of fact, we started to identify the opportunity to link different levels, like sensor level, real-time control, up to ERP and management level in the pyramid style. And uh, this was the period of 90s. After we have celebrated the millennium, we started to talk more and more about smart factory. That means about flexible manufacturing facility where each machine, conveyor, vehicle, but also product is represented by some, let's say, data or knowledge container. So we were talking about flexible network of autonomous units. The communication among the units was very asynchronous. And as a matter of fact, there was some theory, multi-agent system philosophy behind it as driving force. And since 2011, we are talking more and more about Industry 4.0, Industry 4.0 in original German version. Which, uh, bring, which brought threefold knowledge base integration, that means horizontal, vertical, but also the third dimension of engineering where integration, that means from design, first ideas via, let's say, uh, product development, verification, testing, up to the uh, maintenance of products. And as a matter of fact, the mass philosophy is changed more and more, converted more and more into the dual philosophy of service-oriented architecture because implementation of multi-agent systems is much more convenient to be carried out in the way of service-oriented architecture. So this is, let's say, five decades of factory automation. And as a matter of fact, we moved from single controller via decomposition link to higher levels, networking to knowledge-based integration. And Industry 4.0 is about knowledge to be used to integrate systems. And so this is individual control loops at the very beginning. Today we are talking about company-wide integration inside the company, but also outside because Industry 4.0 talks about full integration of the manufacturing facility with the environment. Passive elements are becoming active in virtual space. Products can be represented by some uh, data module, knowledge module, which is able to negotiate on their behalf. And role of knowledge is increasing, is growing. At the very beginning, all the knowledge was simply embodied into the PID algorithm. Today, we are working with semantic structures, ontologies, just to bring as much knowledge as possible to integrate the solutions. Robots. Robots were always connected with our factory automation field. At the very beginning, we were programming, in some sense, stupid single-purpose manipulators. Later on, in 19th, after the millennium, autonomous robots enter the scene. Today we are talking about collaborative robots, which are able to respect the presence of human being, which are able to cooperate with a soft touch and all other things. People who were out of the control loop at the very beginning, just they participated in design, are now regular cooperating entities in the flexible network. 
and teaming with robots is quite obvious task today. So people will team with robots and will play important role in the future. Industry 4.0 is a unique phenomenon. It's in some sense generalization of ideas which were developed in the field of smart factory. It's in some sense manifesto of philosophy, visions, and expectations which resulted from research and also experimental work in the field of factory automation and it gathers, enables trends and impacts. The enablers are quite known. Technology of communication, automation, computing is converging. Today we have mobile phone. We don't know whether it's communication tool or controller or camera or GPS system, whatever. And the virtualization is another aspect, another enabler. That means each physical element has its own twin in the virtual space, which can behave on his, uh, let's say, uh, rights, using his rights to behave, communicate, negotiate. And there are new technologies, 3D printing, clouds, big data, new technologies of artificial intelligence, like deep neural networks. Nobody remembers that 20 years ago they were already here and now, now there is a new period of their usage. So all these enablers are available to all kinds of industries, to all kinds of, let's say, activities of human beings. But the field of factory automation is prepared at the best and was able to pick up the challenge and to absorb the new technologies and manage complex manufacturing systems using these three enablers. It doesn't mean that there are no topics for future research. What is missing is theory of complex systems. We don't have any. And we need to develop uh, what's unique, that we are doing experimental manufacturing facilities without any theory of complex systems available. There are problems with overload of blockage of communication channels because once the entities in the network start to communicate, there are so many messages that the throughput through channels doesn't satisfy the needs. We are losing appropriate ordering of events across the global systems once there are queues in the channels. Big data. The technology is here, but we don't know what to do with the data in a reasonable fashion. That means we need to find the algorithms and methods how to really leverage the huge amount of data we collect. Emergent behavior, another problem. There is no other way how to protect the systems, complex system from emergent behavior, just simulations and constraints which are put on the systems but which make the systems cumbersome. Energy consumption, that's another problem. If, for instance, the conveyors and robots starts to uh, use energy at the same time, there is such a peak which makes uh, blockouts, blackouts for the plant and the vicinity. We are currently solving one of such problems. So there are many problems which should be solved in the future. And there is currently no factory which will fully satisfy the industry for uh, standards. Industry for ideas have big impact on other fields, energy. Energy distribution cannot follow the hierarchical structure from the last century. We need to have, let's say, also smart grids, systems which are fully compliant in their philosophy with Industry 4.0. The same is valid for smart cities. The same is valid for healthcare. Patient is nothing else, just product or semi-product, which is negotiating with different tools like clinics, the treatment, agriculture 4.0. So the ideas of decentralized control of complex systems from industry 4.0 should penetrate into the community. We need to change the research uh, structure or way how the research is organized because industry 4.0 requires big investment for test beds, for test labs, which is not available for small and medium enterprises, which are still driving force behind the industry 4.0. So we need to build teams and concentrate teams with more than critical number of 
researchers. We need to react on the labor market because there will be changes in profession. The estimates are from 30 to 50 percent of positions will be changed. Education. The education should be system oriented, should be interdisciplinary, including social sciences, and show should also consider we should simply learn the students how to learn by themselves in the future instead of one shot pumping of knowledge into their minds. New business models will appear. So industry 4.0 will bring us very soon to society 4.0 with a new way of thinking. And we need to change the way of thinking. The technology will be available. We need to change the way of thinking of people to implement the ideas. So industry 4.0 is really unique uh, in the history of technology and engineering because the development in one field influences the development of the whole society very strongly. And moreover, the industry 4.0 already predicts what will happen and how the society should be prepared for the changes to absorb all the ideas behind it. All of us who participate in EDFA have the privilege to participate in this process of changing the society, being the pioneers of these changes. And as a matter of fact, I personally have had, have had the privilege to cooperate during my lifetime with the leaders in the field. I would like to mention some of them. I had the privilege to cooperate with Otto Struger, who was recognized later as inventor of PLC. I spent many months with Kinter Spur at IPK in Berlin, who was one of the big promoters of CIM. I spent many hours and many days of discussion with the people who contributed to Smart Factory, to Hollenic systems like Jim Christensen Ken Hall from Rockwell, Duncan McFarlane from Cambridge, Paul Walkenas, Alois Zeutl, Thomas Strasser from Vienna School, Walter Colombo from Schneider, Vyatkin, that are all guys who should share this award with me because they helped me to develop agent-based control systems in the years 2000-2010. And now I have the privilege to work with one of the godfathers of Industry 4.0, Professor Halstead. And beside this, I really appreciate the opportunity to directly communicate with such guys like Mervyn Minsky, who spent one week in our lab, with George Clear for more than 30 years, with Lofty Zare for more than 20 years. These guys really influenced me and others, and that's one recommendation from my activities. It's good to stick with the leaders, with the people who are really bringing you new ideas. It's much more easier than to implement your ideas. I think and I hope that a lifetime contribution award doesn't mean that my life period is at the end. You know? I have still plans for the future. Currently, my plan is to complete uh, the building of the Czech Institute of Robotics, Informatics and Cybernetics in Prague. It was established three years ago. We will have new building in two months, so you can see the picture. And as a matter of fact, we would like to create this institute as melting point of international cooperation, cooperation among companies of different names. We have agreement with Siemens already, Rockwell Automation, Eaton, IBM, Hewlett Packard. I have meeting with ABB representative next week to create a big test bed where we can test industry 4.0 solutions in neutral environment where we can attract SMEs to come and cooperate with us. The incubator is already running. So all of you are welcome to participate in this melting pot, which we are preparing in Prague. And I'm also uh, ready to invite EDFA conference one day to be organized in this new building. The conference room is on the top of the 10th floor building with nice view on Prague Castle. And I think you can enjoy staying in Prague as well. So thank you for attention. Thank you for the award. And I'm really looking forward to spend the evening with you here today and to cooperate with many of you in the future. 
either in our new building or somewhere else. Thank you very much. And I have to say that in contradiction to the reply of Angela Merkel to the organizers of this conference, she said yes to us and she visited our institute 10 days ago. It was really exciting even to all of us and help to motivate Czech industry and Czech government to continue in support of Industry 4.0 solution. Thank you very much.